if you got cable uh, or satellite or whatever, you can flip around and you'll find preacher after preacher after preacher after preacher. That that's all they talk about. That's right. I can't remember the last time I heard one of them say, you must be born again. If you are not born again, hell is your destiny. They won't say that because people will turn them off. And one of my biggest pet peeves, they'll be preaching away. Man, they're into it, and they're going. And all of a sudden, they take a break to try to sell you something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with the continuation of our lessons. Mm -hmm. But first, God told me something, and he ain't going to tell you. And the only way you're going to find out is by my book. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's not the temple of God. That's right. Amen. He goes on and says, Okay, first he threw out everything that was of the world, that was of the flesh, that, that was of mankind. He threw all that out. And he, said, and he said unto them, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. There's another purpose of the temple, healing. Mm -hmm. Healing. How many are we healing? And I'm not even talking about laying on hands into crippled walks. They need a spiritual healing. Amen. That's, right, amen. That's the purpose of the temple. They came to the temple with Christ in the temple. We are the temple with Christ in the temple. And he healed them. What are we doing? We're to be out there. We are to have the temple where it's accessible to those who need the healing. But we're not doing that. It goes on. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. Praise. The children will cry, Hosanna to the Son of David, and give him praise. He even goes on and said, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. The temple is a place to continually offer up praise. It's a place where continual prayers are to go up. It's a place where sacrifice is to be made. It's a place where healing is to go forth. It's a place where praise is to shine out. Or we, as the temple of God, doing those things. And there's a lot more. As I said, we could probably do a study on this for months and really look at what is expected of the temple of God. God, but this is just the, the, uh, the basics of it and the beginning of it, and we need to get a hold of it and understand that what we really need to know is that we are the temple, and God's temple is to be holy, and God's temple has a purpose. The temple that Solomon built in his description, and I've seen artists' renditions of it, it was beautiful, it was magnificent, it was fabulous with gold and ivory and all these other things that were in it. it was amazing to look at. It was something that put people in awe. We should be that kind of a temple. I'm not talking about your looks, but there should be something that puts people in awe. There should be something about us that, that gets people to look, that, that puts them in awe. Why was that temple built like that? Because God deserves the best. God wants the best. God wanted his temple to be adorned with the best. And we need to be adorned with the best. All the good things of God. All the attributes of the Holy Spirit. All the fruits of the Spirit. All those good things of God. If we would have all those things, it would cause people to look at us and all. That temple that he built was for a purpose. We have a purpose. The prayers to go up, the healing to happen, the praise to go up, the sacrifices to be made, all those things. This is what we are to be as the temple of God to fulfill the way that God said it's supposed to be done. Again, I take you back. Solomon built it according as he was instructed. We have to build this as we are instructed. Not what we think would be good or would look right or would suit the purpose. Not what the denomination thinks. Not what the pastor thinks. But what God says. That's right. 
We've got to do it God's way if we are going to be a holy temple. And if we are not a holy temple, God said, you are the temple, and the temple is holy. And if any man defile the temple, him I will destroy. I, I can't say this with the intensity I want to say this with. God means business. God means business. When God says something, he means it. How have we gotten to the point where we have convinced ourselves that this is okay and that's all right? And I'm just doing enough to get by. Or, or I, I'll go to church and I'll put money in. I'm going to tell you something. You can't buy God with time and attendance, and you can't buy God with money. It does not work. And I can't understand how we got to the point where we think God is just going to let everything go. Come on, preacher. He meant what he said. And he will do what he said he will do. Right. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what the church world thinks today. And regardless of what we've been brought up believing. And regardless of what we wish were true. God is not a pushover. God is a God of holiness. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God who will not abide disobedience. Well, I'm not being disobedient. Yes, you are. If you're not doing what this says, you are disobedient children. It said all these things, but here's what I want to get to, and then I'm going to try to wrap up. Jesus did all this. And the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious people, the church people, bringing it down to where we live, the church members, those who go every Sunday, those who put their 10% in, those who give more than 10%, uh, those that give to missionaries and missions, they didn't like what Christ was doing. And they had a problem with it. The church today, that's the church today. They don't like it the way God wants it. And what did it say at the end of this? This is what I want you to get. And he left them. He left. You know, there's another place, another scripture where he went out of the temple and he said, you'll see me in this place no more. You're the temple. How close are we to him leaving and saying, you'll see me in this place no more. That ain't so. God wouldn't do that. Yeah, he would. Mm -hmm. He took his chosen people, his hand-picked chosen people, and marched them around in the wilderness for 40 years until they all died. They did not get to enter the promised land. You read throughout the Bible, God means business. The church today needs to understand that. This is a fact. <clears throat> I search it and, and pray and try to find a way for, to get people to understand how serious this really is. It, it's not a boogeyman story to scare you to the altar. It's not uh, to try to sound um, new and cutting edge or whatever. It's the truth of the word of God. If God would treat us like he did the children of Israel, there probably wouldn't be a one of us sitting here. We'd either be marching in the wilderness or our carcasses would already be laying in the wilderness. God will not tolerate disobedience. God will not dwell in an unclean temple. God will not accept. And you can go throughout the Old Testament and you can read this. He will not accept sacrifices from an unclean place. 
He will not accept praise from an unclean place. He will not. And you can go through all the motions. And you can give your money. And you can shout glory hallelujah. And you can raise your hand. You can run down the aisle. You can cry till your tear ducts are dry. And God don't see or hear it. Because his eyes and his ears are focused on that place that is chosen, that is set apart, that is sanctified, that is holy. That's where he looks to. He looked to that temple because it was sanctified, it was chosen, it was holy. There came a time when that temple was defiled. And God no longer looked there. God no longer listened to what They kept going through the motions. They kept having church. They kept doing the same thing. In our day would be, the preacher still got up and preached. The singer still got up and sung. They still took up the offering. Uh, they did their little things and, and everything. But it was all for naught. Because God wasn't in it. And unless we are a holy temple, God isn't in it. I guess uh, to sum it all up, the bottom line of this whole thing, just as succinctly and clearly as I can put it. Unless we get back to being a holy and a righteous people, unless we get back to being a sanctified people, we are in danger. We are in great danger. You can, you can accept this and believe it or not. Now it's between you and God. You know, Peter said something. Knowing all these things, what manner of people ought you to be? Something to think about. But again, just, just as clearly as I can sum it up, the book says, not me, the book says, you're the temple. You are the temple. And the temple is holy. And if any man defile the temple, him I will destroy. That's what God said. You as the temple of God have to meet God's specifications. You have to come up to God's standards. Not the churches. Not mine. Not mom and dad. Not grandma. Not anybody else's. God's. And if we don't, we are in danger. And that, that last scripture that I read just jumped out at me. The church people didn't like what he was doing. And he left. There's a lot of church buildings around that he's left. There's a lot of temples that are in danger of having him leave. We need to get this, and we need to get it good. Again, I don't know how to put it because for so long the church has preached something else, but God means business. He don't play. And if it ain't his way, as the old saying goes, it's the highway. That's it. I'll stop. I just pray you got it. And I'm going to say this as I often say. I know a lot of time I don't get things out as clearly as I would like. But if you seek the Holy Spirit, He'll make it.